Welcome to our teaching today under the topic, What is your identity? What is your identity? My name is Stephen Bugua Doidi from the Archdiocese of Mombasa, Kenya. Every nation has its own way of identifying its citizens. When you, have, you come to Kenya, we have the famous ID card, identity card, that identifies you as a Kenyan citizen. And for us to be able to go to any other nation of the world, we need a passport that helps you to be able to cross our different territories. There are forms of identity cards. And now even the COVID vaccine is becoming another identity card, identifying persons who've taken the vaccine from those who've not taken the vaccine. An unfortunate situation that is limiting travel and other forms of services. Even they talk about heaven, the heavenly citizen. There is an identity card for heaven, of the heavenly citizen. And the question is, what is the heavenly identity card? When you read Romans chapter 8 verse 9, the word of God states clearly, but you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to, if, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. So the Word of God is clearly telling us that if you are truly a heavenly bound being, if you are of God, the Spirit of God lives in you, you are not led by your human nature, by your flesh, but by the Spirit of God. So one way to identify whether truly we are heavenly citizens, whether we have the identity card, our actions can tell us. Heavenly bound beings are led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And that Romans 8, 9, the last part says, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. So the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, is the identity card of every Christian. That is what identifies you from any other person. That is what identifies you from just being a worldly citizen to a heavenly bound citizen, living in accordance to the will of God. The word of God has not said whoever has not been poured on water. It is not the water of baptism that makes you a Christian. Water is important as a symbolism for being cleansed, purified. But what comes in once you've, 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 you've repented and committed yourself to be a Christian and vowed to reject Satan's ways, the water symbolizes cleansing. Then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and makes you a Christian. The Spirit of Christ makes you a Christian. That is the Christian identity. Unfortunately, we have many other acquired identities. Acquired. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 2, we see the word of God reminding us that in the meantime, Saul kept up his violent threats of murder against the followers of the Lord. Saul, mark the words, kept up his violent threats of murder. This guy was murdering Christians. He acquired the, the identity of a murderer. He was known and was proud about it. He went to the high priest and asked for letters of introduction to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he should find there any followers of the way of the Lord, he would be able to arrest them, both men and women, bring them back to Jerusalem. That was his fame. He was famous for that, arresting them and even having them murdered. No wonder even Ananias, after Paul has met Christ and is experiencing a conversion of heart, Ananias protested and the Lord was sending him to Paul because he knew him as a murderer. He never knew him as a man who can be on the side of Christ. He knew him as one who's against Christ. The acquired identity was of a murderer and a man who's torturing, tormenting, persecuting the church of Christ. In Acts 9 again, verses 13, 16, we hear the words of Ananias answering the Lord saying, Lord, many people have told me about this man and about all the terrible things he has done to your people in Jerusalem. Accusation. The fame of Saul 
preceded him. So he continues to say, And he has come to Damascus with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who worship you. The Lord said to him, Go, because I have chosen him to serve me, to make my name known to Gentiles and kings and to the people of Israel. And I myself will show him all that he must suffer for my sake. So Ananias is protesting because this man has an identity acquired of a murderer, of a persecutor, one who's torturing the people who are following Christ. But the Lord said, don't worry, I transform souls. I transform hearts. So it doesn't matter what you've been before. The Lord is not interested in your history. He's interested in who you can become by being in him and for him. But this image of Saul had stuck, murderer, in the minds of many. In Acts 7, verses 58, all the way to Acts 8, verse 1, we see Saul actually taking care of, 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 the, of, of, the, of the things that were being kept be, before him when, when, when my name is Stephen is being stoned to death. It says from verse 58, the, he, they threw him out of the city, that is Stephen, and stoned him. The witnesses left their clocks in the care of a young man named Saul. He was famous about it, taking care of the things that had been left there. So he can be able, they can be able to kill these ardent, faithful man of God called Stephen. They kept a stoning Stephen as he called out to the Lord. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not remember this sin against them. He said this and died. And Saul approved of his murder. He not only killed and murdered and tortured, he approved of it. So this was him now, Saul. This is the kind of title that he had acquired. So the question is, what is my identity? What is your identity? You may be calling yourself a Christian, but what do people call you? In the Bible, we have people acquiring different identities. We have, for example, the Good Samaritan. He was known for his good acts, an acquired identity that was good and powerful. We have the prodigal son. He acquired that identity by taking what belonged to him from his father, going and squandering it to prostitutes. And he acquired that identity of the prodigal son. We have the rich fool, for example, in the Bible. Until today, he's still burning in hell because of what he acquired in his life. We have the good thief. Remember at the cross there, Calvary, we had two thieves. One turned out to be good at the end of the day. He repented and mended his ways. And today he's in heaven. So what describes all these people? You will realize that what defines them are their actions. This is what defines them. This is what has given them identity. So what has given you your identity? You may be calling yourself a Christian. I may be calling myself a Christian. But what do people call me out there is a big question today. You know, we have people who are called drunkards, for example. You know, that man is a drunkard. That woman is a drunkard. That's an identity acquired based on the behavior of that person. That lady is a prostitute. You know, identity acquired. That man is a prostitute. These are identities that we acquire every day. In Kenya, we have people that we call big thieves. They steal in billions. And they feel proud about it. Horrible titles. These are acquired identities. So what is your identity is a big question. I hope you and me, we are not small thieves. All these identities, whether big or small thief, remains a thief. A grabber. Greediness is killing us. This is an identity that many people have acquired today. Kenya, we have that horrible title of being named number three most corrupt in the world a few years back. What a horrible identity we've gotten. No wonder even we are losing business to other nations. Multinationals are preferring to, to, to invest elsewhere because of the horrible identity they've acquired over time. You know, some could be called, they're, they're church goers, known very well that you're always in church. But maybe people call you that man who's always in charge, but he's always drunk. A horrible identity. The lady is always in church, displaying her ties, even in church. I remember one day, I was outside the church at the Cathedral in Mombasa. I looked inside the church and there's a lady whose ties were open completely. And I called her fellow lady and I told her, look at that. Is this really the way she should be dressing up in church? And she was horrified. 
looking at the side. She at the side. She was horrified at her fellow lady. How she was dressed. Her skirt had for it had such a slit and had fallen away. So her thighs were open. And from that day, when I see that lady, I always imagine the lady of displaying her thighs. That's her identity. Because of the way she was dressed, the way she behaves. What is the identity? Some of us are Christians, but we have the identity of stealing tithe. Some of the ladies have the identity of, of opening up their boobs. They are, they, they are peeping. They are always open and peep even in church. What a horrible identity. And we say it is fashion. Holy looking Christians, but moving with people's wives, moving with people's husbands. What horrible identity it is. We can never hide this identity behind Christianity. This is what the Lord sees. He sees beyond the name Christian. You know, some people could be the chair ladies of small Christian communities, but the ones who are bringing up ministers of God, priests and pastors. Horrible identity. What is the identity is the question today. What is my identity? What is your fame? What makes you famous? Boobs popping out, opening up your thighs, grabbing plots, chronic liars like our politicians are. What identifies you from other people? One who vomits abuses, when you open your mouth, it's just abuses. When you go to the Bible, you'll see somebody like Dorcas, and you realize that her fame preceded her, and her fame, her actions, her acquired identity actually saved her life, gave life back to her. Acts chapter 9, verse 39, we see when Peter is told about this woman, Dorcas, who was good is a good ex. And when people had the Peters around, they ran and called him and said, please come. We have a wonderful woman of God who's died. Acts 9.39. So Peter got ready and went with them. When he arrived, he was taken to the room upstairs where all the widows crowded around him, crying and showing him all the shots and calls that Dorcas had made while she was alive. They are showing her actions identity the good lady always helping the poor and you know what peter prayed in the name of jesus and dorcas was resurrected by her actions by her acquired identity what is your identity what is my identity remember god is not interested in your history you can acquire a new identity today many people know mary magdalene as that prostitute who was full of demons but today she's a saint in heaven Saul was transformed into Paul, became an ardent preacher of the word of God, wrote many letters that today they are the word of God in the New Testament. David, after committing adultery and killing that soldier, many people hang on to that identity. There is an adulterous guy, but he never committed adultery again. He changed. He transformed after he was told by prophet Nathan what he did, and he repented, slept on the floor, for, on the floor, left the kingly bed, the status bed, and slept on the floor for one full week. He never ate anything. Repentance from the heart. He never committed it again. So people may remain in their old identity, calling you a prostitute, but it could be a saint today. It doesn't matter your history. Today, David is in heaven. Mary Magdalene is in heaven. St. Paul is in heaven, the previous Saul, the murderer. He changed. You and I can change and be heaven bound. Acquire the heavenly identity. Allow the Holy Spirit to remain in us. Not making him take off because the body, the temple is unholy. It is defiled by sexual, illegal, illicit sexual intercourse. Unholy sexual ties and many other things. So the question is today. What about you and me? What identity have we acquired? And are we going to change it by acquiring a new identity? By mending our ways? Has Christianity transformed us? Has the power in the word of God transformed us? Has the Holy Spirit taken control of us? Or we are still our old selves? Wolves in sheep's clothing. Even in church. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 15 to 17 reminds us that Christ died for all. So that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but only for him who died and was raised to life for their sake. Those who live, these are Christians who are living their Christian vows. These are those people who allow their body to be truly the temple of God. The identity of God has remained in them. 
Unfortunately today, many Christians have remained with Christian names, powerful names, but Christianity is not there. The Holy Spirit is not there. And once the Holy Spirit is not there, you are dead. Remember, human being is body, soul, and spirit. Our souls died with the sin of Adam and Eve. After that, it has taken the death of Jesus because the wage of sin is death. He's died in your place and my place. So we can get back the Holy Spirit that we lost. So that the Holy Spirit can revive our soul and be alive. We are only alive when the Spirit of God is in us. When it takes off because of sin, we remain dead just like it was after the sin of Adam and Eve. And we are told by the word of God that Jesus died so that those who live, those who are baptized, those who are born again, should no longer live for themselves, but only for him, Christ, who died and was raised to life for their sake. We are meant to be living for Christ. My legs are meant to be going where Christ wants them to go. They are not mine any longer. I was purchased by a price, the blood of Jesus. My mouth is meant to be speaking what Christ wants me to speak. Remember as a Christian or a prophet of God. So what does your mouth speak? The words of God? A prophet is a mouthpiece of the one who sent him. It's not his own mouthpiece. He belongs to the owner, the master, the savior, the messiah. Verse 16 says, no longer then do we judge anyone by human standards. We are no longer judged by the standards of human beings, ordinary human beings, the pagans who don't know God. Our standard is above that because we have the Holy Spirit of God who's helping us to be alive, to be truly alive human beings in Christ Jesus who died and resurrected for us. Verse 17 says, anyone who's joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. Did you acquire that new identity, Christianity? Did you remain with it or you've acquired others? Drunkard, prostitute, murderer, abortionist, greedy, all the things that are happening in the world today. May I finish Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. The word of God is calling you. You who you are calling yourself a Christian. The word of God is calling you saying, you must put to death then. The earthly desires at work in you. You must put to death the earthly desires that are working in you, in me. The Lord is commanding if you are truly a Christian. If you want to remain with the acquired names, it's up to you. Remember, your actions will precede you, even in heaven. No wonder Jesus says, I was hungry, you did not feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me water. I was in prison, you didn't come to see me. Because the actions were not there. They were opposite, the worldly actions, the worldly ways. We are being told that we have to put to death then the earthly desires at work in us, such as sexual immorality, indecency, lust, evil passions, and greed. For greed is a form of idolatry. We have acquired other gods, acquiring another identity. Beauty has become another identity, an idolatry, it's become a small god. I'm not saying you don't be beautiful, but it is not everything. It is not everything. Verse 6 says, because of such things, God's anger will come upon those who do not obey him. At one time, you yourself used to live according to such desires. When your life was dominated by them, the old identity, the old selves. Verse 8 says, but now you must get rid of all these things, anger, passion, and hateful feelings. No insults or obscene talk must ever come from your lips. We are being warned. Do not lie to one another. We are not meant to be liars. Some are called liars. Identity. For you have taken off the old self with its habits, the Bible is telling us. Do not lie to one another. For you have taken off the old self with its habits. The old habits must go and acquire new habits. Christ-like habits. So we bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of true love, joy, peace, patience, humility, obedience, self-control. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. People with a new identity, the heavenly identity. Verse 10. And have put, uh, verse 9 and 10. Do not lie to one another, for you have taken off the old self with its habits. And have put on the new self. This is the new being which God, its creator, is, constant, is constantly review, renewing in his own image in order to bring you to a full knowledge of himself. 
that's what we are called to be new beings with a new identity in the eyes of god the heavenly identity not just your identity card kenyan not just your passport or covid vaccination these are earthly things we need the heavenly identity the holy spirit of god he long remain in you if the temple is holy if you're striving for holiness today let's pray for the grace to shade off our old self and put on the new being in christ jesus Heavenly Lord and King, forgive us for the many times they have acquired identities outside of you. Identities of worldly ways, passion, trends, the things of this world. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us with your precious blood. The blood that purchased us. So we be alive, living. Living not for ourselves, but for you. So you can heal us, bless us, protect us here on earth until we make it to the eternal heavenly abode in jesus name i pray trust and believe amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen if you'd wish to continue receiving this every saturday teachings and the ones in a while weekday reflections and some of the live audience teachings now and more Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Steve Wayesu, by clicking on the subscription button and then ensure to also click on the notification bell to get a notification message on your phone as soon as a presentation is uploaded. See you in the next teaching. God is in control and he loves you dearly. Stay blessed always. Bye-bye.